Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Keto and Crime. If you're watching this uh, when it first releases, then you'll note it is Monday, April 22nd. I did not get to this over the weekend, but this is the information that uh, went down on Friday, April 19th in the Chad Daybell trial. It was just a half day, so there's really not a whole lot of information there. Um, Moni, a retired FBI agent, will be back on the stand today, April 22nd, Monday, so I will be covering that. But we are now a full, with jury selection, we are a full three weeks now into starting week number four with the Chad Daybell trial. So that's where we are. My name is Tracy. I do true crime, dark history, horror movies. I am the holiday tree person. Uh, I got Cinco de Mayo up there right now. With that being said, let's dive into what happened Friday, April 19th in the Chad Daybell trial. Let's go. So the day starts off with uh, John Pryor continuing his cross-examination of Melanie Gibb, who took up the majority of the time on Thursday the 18th. Basically, he's going through her entire testimony, which we heard about um, blessings and dark light scale, um, the information about Lori and Chad wanting her to lie, saying that J.J., was with her at Frozen 2 in Arizona when he was actually missing. And so all of that can be boiled down into he went through and pretty much re-asked everything that she had been asked on direct examination by putting in, was it Chad or Lori that asked you that? So, of course, most of it was Lori. In fact, I think she did. She said that you know Chad never said he was going to hurt anybody, and he never specifically asked me to do anything. So... Basically, Pryor took everything and, again, clopped it all on Lori. I'm not saying Lori is innocent. We know that she's not. But it, Pryor was very diligent in how he made sure that everything relating to the children came from Lori, not Chad. So that was pretty much uh, the gist of it. They talked about a trip that everyone took to the Gravity Factory, a jump house. They talked about um, what she had seen about Lori and Chad's relationship. She also uh, was asked a little bit more about her relationship with David, as we know they are married but live separate. And so basically um, that ended Pryor's cross-examination. Lindsay Blake did redirect and kind of qualified uh, some of that, uh, specifically about Chad's visions of things like Tammy passing through the veil, uh, the children being dark, and Gibb did confirm that that sort of stuff came from Chad. Not necessarily Lori. It came from Lori, too. But a lot of that stuff about how J.J., Tammy, Charles, and Ty Lee were all labeled dark or zombie all came from Chad, not necessarily Lori. So what Blake is trying to do here is you don't necessarily have to say, I'm going to kill these people uh, without being part of it. Uh, and then after Lindsay Blake rests, Pryor does another redirect and then asks Gibbs about castings. And she pretty much said she was unfamiliar with castings until she met Lori and Chad. And that uh, basically he was trying to get her to say they are ceremonies to help people, not hurt people. But she said she wasn't really aware. So that really got them uh, nowhere. But basically there was a couple of objections. And then basically Melanie Gibb is released. The next witness calls uh, called is, excuse me, FBI agent Doug Hart, retired FBI agent Doug Hart, and he is a currently a chief deputy for Can Canyon County Sheriff's Office. Uh, he is being uh, questioned by Assistant District Attorney Lindsey Blake, and he will be talking about a lot of texts and emails and conversations that came out of the Lori for Style iCloud account. So basically, he, they go over his career with the FBI. He was, said he was one of the FBI agents working with Fremont County Sheriff and Rexford Police on this case. And then they uh, go back and forth between uh, some texts between Lori and her friend Audrey, who did testify in the Lori Vallow case. Again, I covered that trial. It's right up there. And then uh, they, within that, they talk about uh, how much trouble with Chad and her living so far apart, how hard it is for them to meet. And then they talk about when it was good for 
them to talk and then they uh um basically just showing i guess the ins and outs of trying to carry on an extramarital uh, affair then there is a couple of texts from uh, melanie of uh, halawaski then boudreau uh between her and Lori talking about how brandon doesn't want certain brandon boudreau does not want certain uh people around the house and uh, basically, they talked about a cop friend uh, by the name of Allie Bloomer's who, husband, who is a cop, how they were saying that both of them were 3.2 dark. So basically, anyone that was th- what they're setting up here is anyone that thwarted or attempted to stand in the way of what they were up to became dark. Uh, he's also talking about a couple of texts between Lori and Chad saying that uh, they seem to be very panicky when talking about uh, some of the police officers' efforts as we get further into the investigation, and they're calling a lot of the police and for- law enforcement dark. Like This is all a huge conspiracy by the police and Satan to drag them down. And then basically uh, talking about can he help clear Melanie Palawaski's house of demon forces and then uh, talking about how her brother Adam is dark and a lot of different types of information, basically just a whole lot of uh, conversation about family, family specifically of Lori's that is not into what they're up to. And then we fast forward to basically the summer of text referring to the infamous romance novel the or romance story that chad wrote about uh himself and uh laurie where they called themselves james and elena or elena uh my review of that pile of garbage is right up there and a lot of steamy texts between them talking about showering together and whatever else they they do and then uh, pretty much that took up the rest of the of the morning she did talk about um some te- they did talk about some texts in which they referred to tammy as being sick or weak and blah 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 you know basically trying to set tammy up as being you know ready and then the couple of texts about her, her find Lori officially finding out that she was not the beneficiary of charles life insurance charles life insurance and then uh some more of them pretty much saying bad stuff about Brandon Boudreaux, who is pretty much trying to protect his family from all the bad things. So basically uh, more about their relationship, their sexual uh, chemistry, uh, how he felt Tammy was not long for this world, just setting up a really good background, I think for what we're about to dive into on the next day of testimony. So that was it. Pretty much they dismissed at noon. On Friday, uh, April 19th, very, very quick to the point. Uh, I will be back with you tomorrow, Tuesday, April 23rd, with what happened today, Monday, April 22nd. And until next time, keep on grind.